Teddy Long that gang. And shout out to Red Light Crew. Hey, you're one of 12 listeners of the Real Life Podcast. Yeah, you know what? The, to define that uh, uh, better, um, I think the key there is... Uh, zero cat, zero cat, zero cat, zero cat. I just lost my trend of thought. Hello, and welcome into episode 154 of the Nation Real Life Podcast. And good teams always get hit with the injury bug at one point or another. The Real Life Podcast has been hit with, uh, I'll call it the injury bug here. Uh, We are short-staffed, but we got a couple of new fresh faces on the pod this week. I'm Tyler Rumchuk. I made it. I always make it. Bagged milk has car issues and well, is stuck at the shop. Let's just let's just drill in on the bagged milk situation. We yeah. get a text saying, now we all know in Edmonton it's minus 45 at the moment. Yeah. We get a text from bagged milk saying his car overheated. What? I'm not a scientist, but my mic has been turned off and now it's back on. Okay. You're good. I'm not a scientist, but how the fuck can something overheat in these conditions? Yeah, I'm going to call BS on that. Now, to be fair, I did get a text from Bagged Milk this morning saying the dealership believes it to be a faulty thermostat. It can get jammed, shut off, and then the coolants cannot flow. If you know anything about cars, let us know at Real Life Podcast, wherever you get your social media fix in. Um, but you heard Jay. He's here. You toughed it out. Wanye is ill, so he's actually sick and has reason good reason not to be here so does chalmers i called him and he picked up in a mad panic you could feel the stress but also adrenaline going through him because he's like man this house has this furnace problem wrong and like five houses have frozen pipes that are about to burst and he's basically busy at his real job that's fair i'm i'm also juggling hosting 25 people from finland at the moment and that's there's some logistics going on with that at the moment because we're moving them around canceling some certain <laughs> trips because of weather so i uh, i can i can understand people have issues with this weather but you know some of us can just roll up our sleeves and still show up when we're supposed to show up you know and uh record a podcast and record a podcast uh the other voice you heard that is zach lang he's one of the new faces around the nation network zach welcome to real life you are on oilers nation radio but this is your real life debut it is my real life debut long time listener first time uh podcast guest so excited Ooh. to be here yeah, you, would you, you would you like to give us a live review it's awesome okay and, and i don't understand half of the things that happen but it's great is chalmers a cheater okay no oh fuck i'm not gonna get into this no no you, it, it, you, I'm gonna you play you, in the middle you don't have to well no no it's it's there's no wrong answer okay there is a there is a writer answer but just you know what's your you just said yes or no did chalmers did chalmers cheat is he is he a chummer i i don't think so Oh, wow. Okay. There you go. Uh, Zach, why don't you tell the people what your role around the Nation Network is going to be like? I am the content boy. So the official title is uh, news director and senior columnist as uh, Jay grabs his second muffin very loudly. Mm. Yeah. If you're hearing that crinkling noise throughout the podcast, (laughs) Jay is eating muffins live. while. Well, if you haven't heard already, I've been juggling many things (laughs) and still making all my appointments, except for I haven't been feeding the temple. So hungry boy. I'm having my second muffin while, while, while the show is going on. Welcome to the podcast, Zach. Nicholas Good is hey, also Ty here, guy. heir to the good and good law yeah, fortunes. Absolutely. Um, Nick, welcome to the pod. Star Thanks, between Tyler. two Uggs. Star, star between, between two, two Uggs. Uggs. Yes, absolutely. Um, my mother has Instagram and she ah. saw that between two Uggs video and how I was a little intoxicated at like 1.30 in the afternoon and she expressed her concern with me. But did she see the uh, the Brumcast slash Beatcast <laughs> the, uh, f- live from Singapore <laughs> Sam's? <laughs> we, uh, we don't even need to get into that. Someone, one of the, one viewer was very, very ticked <laughs> off that we would be intoxicated and go on Instagram live to break down. Shame on game. you. Yeah. Shame on me. <laughs> you have an uh, onus to the community to provide top tier co- quality content. Yes. You know what? You could argue that that was still quality content. Well, I didn't it, see it. it was uh, too busy. Oh, it was quality. It was quality. Was the trip down to Calgary your first nation trip, Nick? It was actually. Yes, it was. And what'd you think of the experience as a whole? It was a great experience. I had a great uh, travel buddy. My bus buddy was, uh, I couldn't ask for anyone better. It was me. A uh, couple of roommates. <laughs> Couple, couple of roommates. Uh, we had a, we had a good time. We, uh, you know, the result of the game 
wasn't what we hoped it would be, mm-hmm. but we're going to get into the uh, the fireworks. Here we go. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Should we just get into it now, Tyler? Uh, well, uh, no, we, let's, no. Let's, let's do a little debrief on okay. the trip. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, the trip was great. Uh, uh, Backside Tour did a great job uh, hosting us on their buses, getting us down there in a timely fashion. Um, our our specific backside was Brandon. Yes, he's a fucking he's a beauty. Great guy. I love that guy. Yeah, oh yeah, he was he was hilarious. Was, that was um, we I, rolled a hundred deep into Calgary. We had a great crew. Mm-hmm. Everyone was just in good spirits. The bus rides down were h- hilarious. The chanting at the game did not stop. The chanting at the game. Well, and, and, and well, the Finns joined us, right? Mm-hmm. So the Finns were adamant about ch- uh, chanting until you heard the Miko Koskinen. Miko Koskinen. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got heard some that new Trevor chant going oh, on? Oh, we got some new. Oh, God, you had to do a new Trevor That was chant. a great one, actually. Mm-hmm. We were, yeah, and we, we had a lot of people behind that one. We were, we were belligerent, but tasteful. <laughs> uh, and we were an engaged crew. <laughs> and, so maybe uh, still after the game, Jay. <laughs> what, what, why? What, what did no, I do? I'm just leaving it at that. Oh, well, I, I, I was hot. <laughs> yeah, I was hot. But, you know, I'm probably not the only one that was hot. Mm-mm. Rick was hot from Women's oh, Nation Radio. He boy. was oh, steaming. Um, I was just... Rocking, of course, a Yamamoto jersey. Yeah. I had too many Saddle Dome beers to give a shit. At one point, I sat down in the wrong section. Um, but Those dome phones you know, get you, man. You know, Ty, dome I, I could have used one more beer personally. Like, I could have used maybe one more beer to drink, but hey. I accidentally knocked a beer out of Nick's hands. I don't even know how. Like, I was just walking <laughs> fast. I'll tell you why. Because... Because we're such a big group, we have to sit in the press level area, which yeah. is basically the saddle of the saddle dome. I don't know what the hell is up with that. Either gravity increases or whatnot. It's but tilted. When, when you're standing on the stairs, you feel tilted towards the ice. I oh, fell yeah. once. So like, Shout out back to Brandon. He saved Tyler he from caught going. Me. I fell over my row and he caught me and hoisted me back up. You're Tyler, the new how coom. many beers did you have? <laughs> Again, a lot. It's it's <laughs> not it's not shit, a Cal- it's not a Calgary trip if someone doesn't fall into the down down into another row of, of seats. Ty guy and I also shotgun some uh, twisted teas at the at the hotel before heading out to the old dome so and we did like a couple of shots of vodka oh, like, yes that's we, right we got after it Boys, pretty good you gotta pace yourself here like <laughs> milk did not pace himself no, he was no. hurting on the bus ride up i think he had yeah i think he had like three naps like <laughs> before the game like he just kept checking in and out like he was he was in good spirits and uh that was fun to see and there's some other people are having equal fun but like yeah. it was cool it's always interesting when like this is what i love about when we do events and stuff like just the community around you know being being a fan of the team and you know the people we get to meet when we do these types of things but like it's just interesting to hear like where they come from or their story and all that like that's the thing i love the most about doing these events and these trips is getting to meet these people like and like it's like the internet's like doesn't feel real and when you see these people in real life and like hear like like there was that those crew of people all wearing nude forever shirts and just stuff like that. i'm like this is just so fucking cool and then they're, they're telling you their story about why they came and i'm like this is the best and everyone just gets along like yeah. our, our like i know our bus right it was just like one solid unit and if the right song came on people are standing up and dancing and like it was just unreal fireball for some trivia trivia for some fireball i should say so there yeah. was, yeah, it was yeah, a good we, time going down. It was a party. Like from the second you board the bus, you're right. You feel like a sense of community yeah. from Oilers Nation because it's all Oilers fans and the one Kachuk fan. <laughs> oh, um, oh, yeah. yeah but that guy even had a hell of a story as mm. well. So there's one guy on the bus wearing a Matt Kachuk jersey. And the story is that his How buddies, ironic, eh? Yeah. We did, yeah, no before kidding. Before we even knew what was going to um, happen. And a but, Sam but- Bennett duster. Yeah, he did have quite the stash. Um, but basically... The story I heard was that his wife, his buddies convinced his wife to buy him tickets for this hockey trip down to Calgary without saying it was for Oilers Nation. So he just <laughs> That's thought, amazing. like, she just thought she was buying him a trip on to go see the Flames in Calgary, and it was awesome. And then eventually, it's just all Oilers fans and him. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, he, he you know, he, 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 he was a nice guy. He was. He, 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 played, was like, he played along well. He played, he played along well. He made a fun bet with, uh, with, Rick, Dan. with, with Dan well, and, and Rick. I think if uh, oh. Rick, he, he would have wore Rick's onesie ah. if, um, if, the, if, if, if the Oilers won. But uh, yeah, no, he had good spirits and he was, he, like, he was tolerable. He wasn't driving me crazy despite wearing number 19 on his back. Mm. Um, but speaking of that game, and I suppose we could dig into it to a second, but actually 
just being in Calgary, Zach, you worked for years with the Calgary Herald yep. and Post Media down yep. in Calgary. Um, and now you're up in Edmonton for a few weeks. Comparison between the two cities or maybe between the two fan bases now that you've kind of spent some time immersed in both. It's interesting. We were kind of talking about that in a morning meeting today. It's been interesting coming up to Edmonton. Like Edmonton is a much nicer city. It's a much friendlier city. Everybody here is so nice. That's probably been the thing that surprised me the most about it all. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm from St. Albert. I've always wanted to live up here. So it's always kind of been a dream come true of mine, but the fan bases are interesting. Like, I mean, in Calgary, uh, they got a strong fan base. They're, they're rabid fans, but they kind of do tend to kind of come and go with the team. Um, as the flames are doing well, they come and show up and when they're not doing well, they go and hide. Um, but it's interesting. It's been great to be up here so far. So I'm loving it. Unloyal. That that's how you're describing the flames fans. Just yeah, just spot, well, 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 uh, this will actually tie to the game. Oh. Mm-hmm. Spot pickers, <laughs> that happens. <laughs> you got more? Uh, shall shall we? we? I feel like we just got to keep uh, pushing you a little shall bit. Shall we? Here, oh man, let's, let's dig into that game then, because obviously the result didn't go Edmonton's way, but uh, there is a lot to unpack in that hockey game, and it's mm. pro- like I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, odds are you've heard it from a thousand different people already. You and your friends have beaten it to death, but Kachuk and Cassian, like where where does this go? Huh, where does it go? And so, we, well, do we want to take to where it's going to go or do we want to kind of talk about the events of Saturday first? Um, yeah, if you can, okay, sure, go into it. Tell us, tell us your point of view here. So, <clears throat> I'm a little bit old school. Mm-hmm. So, I have no issues with the hits. And I'm going to open up with that. Now, having said that, um, especially the first hit, you can look like uh, I think two of them are charges. Like he left, he left his check to go ch- check a player who was already yeah. engaged with another player, and that's something that we know the NHL wants to get out. But I'm not going to say I, I don't even want to start the narrative of taking hitting out of the game or anything like that. So he saw his chance, he took a shot, and hey, he clobbered him. He got him good. Ref didn't call a penalty. You know, if, if that was, um, if that wasn't Zach Cassian, if that was Leon Dreisettle, he did that too. That's definitely a two minute penalty. It could even be a five minute penalty. They could have even call it a headshot. Like it would have probably yeah. been, and, and, and that probably could have ended it there. Um, cause we would have gone on the PP and our PP's red fucking hot and we probably would have scored. And you know, Matthew's now in trouble, but he persists. He goes and takes another shot. Zach's Zach Cassian. He's clearly, you know, he's got the crazy in him, but that's what allows him to be the player that he is now a first liner. And he took matters into his own hands and that's fine. Cause that's what hockey is. If you want to go around like, and, and, and there's the whole thing like, well, you can't fight. You can't make a guy fight for, for hitting. I'm like, well, Hitting is completely legal, and but he crossed the line, and we all know those were borderline hits. I don't care if you're a Flames fan or an Oilers fan or a fan of another team. You knew they were borderline. You knew you were pushing the envelope with those hits with how you are doing it, clearly targeting to hit the guy. So retribution was going to come. We knew, it, we knew it in the stands. We knew something was going to happen, and that second hit happened, and Cassian did what he did, and I loved it. But at the same time, I have this like sick feeling in my stomach. I'm like, fuck, this is going to hurt the team. Mm-hmm. Or there's going to be a penalty. You're just praying they kill it off. Just pray. But like normally, like there's, you, you'll hear players say, like there's penalties that they'll kill off all day. Like, well, like don't worry. Like that was like because of what you did, what, what or because of what you did, we got you. We're going to kill it. Now, granted, this is a four minute penalty, so like that's pretty tough. And they they killed the first two minutes off, and that was great. But what I have issue with is. The way the league is designed now is that it allows Matthew Kachuk to go and do that. Yeah. And pay zero price. Mm-hmm. And that's why fighting was act- is actually in the game is to allow or prevent someone from feeling confident that they could do something that's high risk that could hurt someone. It, it makes them think twice about doing it. And to me, like, it's there because those Kachuk hits, sure, maybe I'll agree with George Peros and say they weren't illegal, but they can be legal and dirty at the same time. And the reason fighting's there is so that players can police amongst themselves 
those kind of plays and those kind of hits where maybe the rule book doesn't recognize that they're dirty and unneeded, but the players do. Well, but there's it's predatory. But there's, it's predatory, and that's yeah. the thing, right? Like it's it's they're right. They're not necessarily illegal hits, but they're no. predatory hits. Kachuk was coming down to hit Cassian as hard as he possibly could, right? And the, you have to have it in the game where the guys can stand up for themselves in those sort of situations, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I hate all the commentary that's come out about, oh, well, they don't have to fight. They don't have to fight. No. Well, how long has Kachuk, Kachuk been doing these sort of things now? And has he ever had to answer the bell? And the answer is no, he hasn't. Oh, that's why he's the turtle. But like that, that, that first hit, that first hit, I think the league has been trying to get out of the game where the player comes totally. from. Like, yeah. so that's the one where like the refs have to do something. Like, th- like it, it, that exact same instance with a different set of refs could have resulted in a completely different outcome. Different refs there might have called that a five minute charging penalty. Yep. Right? Because you know, but, but it it they didn't. And that's okay. So now it now now it's not a referee situation. It's now a player situation. Now the players are gonna handle this. And yeah, I wish Cassian probably just waited and like like Tippett said took a number and waited for the right time to take his head off. Um, but that didn't happen. And I don't fault Cassian. Like I would have been like, I was hot in the stands just watching this shit. And I could, I, and I'm not Zach Cassian. Like, uh, like, like I, you know, this guy can actually do something about it. Uh, so it was, it was, it was, it was, it was very infuriating to witness because we got, we got, we got the penalty. Like we, we had to pay the price ultimately for a rat going around the ice, doing what he's doing, hiding behind the rules. Yeah. And right. And that's, and that's where I have the, 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 the issue. Now I'll actually say like, and, and it, actually, sorry, I liked what Tippett said. Like he should have took a number, but he's like, he also said we should have killed off that penalty. Like the team should have like tried. Like, I get it. Trying to kill a penalty and, isn't always going to happen. Power play later in the third period that they could have tied the game yeah, yeah. on. Oh, they uh, had more than enough time to get back yeah. into it. I, I actually don't blame that event on the game. The, that third goal that we let in was a cluster fuck of like, just of errors. Koskinen like, gave up two that he probably should have had. Yeah. So I would blame the third goal for, for losing, not, Zach Cassian, um, and it's in, and that's that's okay. So I'm totally fine with Zach Cassian. Did now, Kachuk saying what he's saying after, and and Rasmus Rasmus Anderson, Anderson yeah. Yeah. coming out and saying what he's saying. Like that's adding fuel to the fire. So now we can talk about where this is going to go, or what should happen, or at least what I think should happen. And this I, next game is going to be interesting. You mean the next? Battle of Alberta. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just hope we talk. We were talking about it up in the office. I just, you know, if Cassian comes back and he just goes immediately to target Kachuk, nope. and he gets himself Shouldn't. thrown out again, then he's just playing more into Kachuk's bullshit. Nope. Yeah. So, I, like I was saying, and I'm sure you'll have a different opinion, Jay. Um, he's just got to go out there, hit Kachuk hard, hit him hard, hit him clean, and then leave it at that. But you wouldn't want to see Kachuk or any oiler take a number on Goudreau or Monaghan? That's exactly what should happen. Well, see, what really? I, was, I was saying it upstairs. I don't even think it's worth going after Goudreau. He's not, I mean, Zach said he has been heating up a bit, but Goudreau's been shit this year. It's not even worth taking a shot it's, at Goudreau. It's the message. It's, it's the message because your turtle teammate mm-hmm. wouldn't answer the bell. So now, now your teammates have to pay the price sure. for his cowardice. I just don't want them to play in, you know, play into the bullshit and start taking nope. reckless penalties, nope. putting us down again. Cause we're still, we're still in a dog fight for the top yeah, of, of that, course. uh, that Pacific division with huh. the flames could be tied for it after yeah. tonight. We're yeah, recording exactly. this on Tuesday. I would, uh, uh, so, I, I think, you know, like, so if Cassian and Kachuk don't fight when the puck drops. Kachuk's not going to fight him. Exactly. Kachuk's not going to fight so, him. No. He's, so, not, he's already said that. Yeah. Kachuk said so, that right after the game. Like, so oh, if he doesn't, fight. but you never know, like he's a spot picker too. So he might try to jump Cassian. Uh, so he can get his, try to get his licks in maybe oh, who know. knows. And then hopefully, imagine? and hopefully, well, we, you don't know, but well, if, if I'm the Oilers, if I'm Zach Cassian, I'm going after Monahan, mm. Goudreau. I'm just, I'm just like, sure. I'm just, I'm just looking. I'm the star lo- players. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking for the opportunity. That's well, my mission. This is, this is the thing. Like I was talking about earlier with the predatory hits. Like Cassian even said earlier today, he's like, well, okay, the league is saying that these type of hits are okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna play that type of a game. Yeah. Because Cassian's always been a guy that to walk that line. Mm-hmm. He's always told that line mm-hmm. into questionable play. I think he's going to come out there and he's going to look to just take someone's head off. Yeah. 
and and the expectation probably from the flames is going to be Luch needs to simmer this down. Mm. So then the counter punch oh, to boy. that is <laughs> the counter punch to that is is we move Peluso from Bakersfield to a two way and we bring him up for one game. Are you going to waste a spot? No. See, no. this is we see we can't play. Into, this is the stuff we can't Ka- play into. Let's Ka- 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 can't can hit. Fight. Yeah, yeah. Nurse, Karen does as much as him. Peluso would. He, Nurse could fight him. Mm. Peluso's tough. Yeah, but Peluso can't play. Kara can play more than Peluso. Can at least kill penalties too. Yeah, like he's not a complete dead spot lineup. I'm Peluso would for be, one game. Yeah, but this is an important game. We're yeah. sending a message. Well, yeah, yeah exactly. We're, this is the mental warfare. We're not, and that's the thing. Like, what I love about all this is, I think this is actually something that could bring the team closer together because Absolutely. we're not the ones that come off looking soft no. and getting and, and 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 getting shit on and looking. We didn't. We like like talk no, about the no, players. No teammates jumped in to to, mm. to Chuck's defense. You could say Lindholm kind of did, and then Neil took care of that. I mean, like nothing. Nothing was there. Nothing was there to show support or back up there. I mean, the linesman let freaking Cassian yeah. hit him, knock him down, pick him back up, and hit him down like again. Six, seven good shots. Yeah, yeah. Probably. Look at look at how many NHL players, mm. uh, former or former, yeah. have reached out to Cassian. Mm-hmm. Whether it's on Twitter, and Cassian said earlier too that he had like twenty text messages from people he didn't even know in the league. Mm. Like, uh, how many times has anybody reached out to Matthew Kachuk in the last day or two? Yeah, probably not a lot. Probably well, not they, a lot. And then they the the fake news propaganda machine puts. Kachuk in a good light yesterday meeting that kid oh, before the game. You're like, oh yeah, well, isn't he just a mm. treat? For those who missed it, a Sportsnet reporter sent out a video the day after when the flame, or a couple days after when the Flames were in, in Montreal. Montreal, and it, the video just happened to start right as Matt Kachuk <laughs> is walking out the tunnel for morning skate, and he meets with a kid and says, "Hi, my name's Matthew." And then Kachuk glances at the camera yep. and goes yeah. back to talking to the kid. Kid's in a Goudreau jersey, yeah. So yeah. clearly, like, not his number one fan. But anyways, who cares? <laughs> but like. What I do love about all this is it's restoring the spark of the Battle of Alberta. And that's why I want us to have an aggressive response or be ready to respond aggressively, whatever way you want to look at but it. But I think you can have an aggressive and uh, tough response without calling up you know, a guy just to take up a roster spot to, to get into a fight. Yeah. I think there's enough... Gr- that's the way it was. Well, no, I know, Jay, but two years ago they were doing that. Sure, but right now, well, yeah, well, two years ago we Jay, you're weren't just that old school. Team. You are. Well, but here's the thing: Cassian's going to go run around. We got to protect Cassian now because Cassian's yeah. going to go look for his shot. He's going to look for his shot, mm-hmm. and Luch is going to be there. Yeah, but you don't think Nurse and like Zach said, Kara can do that? You don't want Nurse fighting Luch. You, I mean, you, 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 no, you, you don't. You I just don't, don't even want to risk it. Like yeah. put 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 someone who's like just put someone who is who is who is just an established fighter in that. Kara's not like he he can hold his own, but like he he's, he he doesn't like pound guys. Like Cassian can pound a guy. Like like you can see he like he throws like bombs. Right? Nurse is. I think if any nurse is good, but you just don't want to put nurse in that position. Sure. Is all I'm saying. Nurse. Sure. That's I'm fair. saying I'm saying nurse can do it, but like let's just like protect. Nurse is like not hurting himself because he like like he'll he could break his hand and if we did that then we'd be well, fucking to be pissed fair, off. Ca- Cassian, if he has to fight Lucic, Cassian can handle his own against Lucic. I say, yeah, I agree. I, yeah, don't I mean, Lucic, I don't think you have to worry about Lucic like chasing Lucic Cassian. Isn't actually, able to catch anybody. Yeah, that's Christ what I mean. Sake. He can't catch yeah. Cassian. Oh, Flurry chucked him last. Did you see yes, that? That was awesome. great. <laughs> or Kale Flurry on the Habs laid yeah, him yes. out. Or Cass should just do what Kachuk did, and Cass should bury one of the stars. Luch should go after him and Cass shouldn't fight him. Mm, yeah. But you know Cassian would yeah. he'd Cass- him because again he yeah. respects that shit. Absolutely. Yeah. No, uh, I know, but like but it's 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 just like sir, like we know what that's the thing. We know Cassian can fight and do all that, but the mm. fact if he didn't would be interesting. Yep. And you don't He's know Luch. Hilarious. Maybe he goes crazy and takes a five minute penalty. Yeah, maybe. Um, I wanted to share these with you, Jay, because you haven't had the chance to hear them, and I'm not sure how many listeners would have, but here was Cassian earlier today talking about the incident. No, I'd do it again all over again. It's uh, it's one of those things. Um, after speaking with Paris on the phone, he explained how the hit um, is not dirty, so that cleared up a lot of... Uh, uh, that, that gave me some clarity of what you can do and what you can't do now. So I put that in the memory bank and then um, clean or dirty. Um, if someone takes two runs at you um, on your blind side, I told them uh, since I've been in uh, 
minor midget, I've uh, stood up for myself and my teammates. People don't do that to me or my teammates when I'm out there. Uh, to me, those are two dangerous hits. If they're clean, they're still predatorial, which is completely fine. I'm a big boy. I love big boy hockey. But if you're going to play big boy hockey, you got to answer the bell every once in a while. Zach, with some of your frustration, the fact that there was no penalty on that second one, that if you had looked over and saw the referee's hand in the air, things might have been a little bit different? Uh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. But like I said, um, there's no penalty call. I'm not, I'm not crying about the hits. It's, it's hockey. It's a game of hockey. It's rough. I thought uh, they're a little bit uh, on the blind side, but at the end of the day, I've laid uh, big hits like that. Um, I've been hit like that. Like that. Um, but um, two times uh, is more than enough. You play with fire, eventually you're going to get burned. And uh, he he messed with the wrong guy. And uh, I don't think he realizes that we're in the same division and uh, have a great memory. Zach, are you able to make a case for yourself when you're speaking to Ferros? Because I mean, not you know, I think seven days ago, Audrey stood up for a teammate and yeah. a dollar guy, and you know, it was described as pounding and pummeling uh, Ryan Lindgren. Uh, not much different from what you did. I, well, I'm just defending myself, right? If you if you're gonna hit like that. Um, I have to protect myself, and I, I protect my teammates. It's not my fault. A lot of the league doesn't have have guys like me anymore. But if you're going to run around like that, um, when I'm on a team, it's not going to happen. And uh, I'll take my two games. I'll get well rested, well recharged, have some good workouts, and I'll be ready to go when I come back. There you go. There's Zach Cassian after he, his suspension. He is just going to kill somebody. Like I, after you hear that, gonna kill somebody. Okay? Nick, I agree with you mm. on the sense that I don't want to oh. see him do something dumb, but I think we might see him just go yeah. fucking He's bananas. Do some dumb shit out there. I just love him more. Like that was unreal. That press conference. This, we didn't really talk about this yet, but this now somehow factors into his contract negotiations, doesn't it? It might, man. Like, it might, like it this really might, might get him his four million you bucks. You look at, like, Dreisaitl said after the game, I can't, I think it was Sunday, or even after, like, right after the game, he said something like, oh, man, like, Cassian's such a huge part of this mm-hmm. team. He's such a heart and soul guy. It's like, oh, boy, here we go. Yeah. Like, you, you know you know they're re-signing him. Or is this, it, does this lead to Cassian loving it here so much he wants to take a discount? He loves the Battle of Alberta, and he That's wants to play in it four it. times a year. I doubt it because his agent's probably in his ear going, don't fucking do that. <laughs> yeah. But exactly. but maybe, but th- this is where we need to lean on Connor, right? Like, like yeah. you know, Zach Cassian isn't this version of Zach Cassian without being on the first line of the Edmonton Oilers playing with uh, Connor yeah. McDavid. So I think, I think you know, you got to factor in a few things and I really sure. hope that uh, the captain can, uh, can, can help out with that. And I hope Zach wants to stay and want to protect these guys too. But yeah, I don't know. I'm excited. Like you said, like if, if you want to play big boy hockey, you have to you 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 have to reciprocate. That's mm-hmm. big boy hockey. You can't step up to that level and then just run away. But that's where the rules, and this is what drives me nuts. The league should be embarrassed. They they've got to be so they're so inconsistent. Like for Kadri not to get anything, and then for Cassian to get something. Like where's the consistency? Like they were trying to compare it to like the Roman Polak thing that Nurse did, but like that was like Cassian got hit and immediately responded. Yeah. It wasn't like. 10 minutes later, two shifts later, three shifts later and jump someone like he got clobbered. No mm-hmm. arm went up. Mm-hmm. So he, he policed himself. Like it's, 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 it's just a shame. Like he should have got a penalty cause that is a penalty and yep. I'm totally fine with that. Mm-hmm. It should have been, yeah, f- four minutes, I guess. Yeah. I, 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 I can subscribe to that. It's just, it's, it's just such a shitty situation. Like I was so fucking mad when this happened yeah. and I'm, yes, he was, <laughs> and I see a guy in a conjunct, Kachuk jersey at the game and I'm not there to start fights and I said to the guy like you should be embarrassed to wear that <laughs> like, it's, I'm like I'm like it's okay that you wear a Flames jersey but you should be aware, uh, embarrassed to wear that guy's name on your back and we were getting into an exchange and like we're like it wasn't like he did he's like what did you think about this I'm like I'm fine with the hits but you if you're gonna if you're gonna cross the line and do that, you gotta pay the price. And he's telling me how he doesn't have to pay the price. Blah, blah, blah. So we're going back and forth. And this this talk lasts long. We get, gets into the bathroom because we're in the line for the bathroom. And then this old guy has the audacity to come up to me and says, "Cassian is a coward for what he did." What? How fucking delusional are you, sir? <laughs> oh, and so like that, and so like that, like triggered me next level because I'm like, oh my god, some old guy just like chimed in and like said something so stupid, and I just want to like throw my ug at him. 
Jay was wearing his Uggs at the game. You weren't You're really wearing Uggs. I'm wearing them right now. It's Confirmed. fucking cold, yeah, guys. You, <laughs> you are. You gotta um, you gotta gear up for these <laughs> these weather events. In my life, this might be the best the Battle of Alberta has ever been. I love it. it. In it's, like my time remembering it's being the in Alberta, I can remember. Yeah. It's been in a long time. So it's I, either we're kind of good and Calgary sucks, or Calgary yeah. is good and we no. really suck. So. It's that's the thing on the whole, like on the outside, like because I'm going through the emotional process mm-hmm. of this, but like this is fucking awesome, and like January 29th can't come soon enough, mm-hmm. which is telling me. The BOA is fucking legit. Yeah, 15 seven days. 17 days off for Cassian. He's going to be yeah. real ready to go. R- real rested. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of good workouts yeah. in. Yeah. I'm probably <laughs> mixing in a couple <laughs> Muay Thai uh, uh, bouts and training. Jesus Christ. Um, I floated the question out on our social medias. Three words to describe the current state of the Battle of Alberta. I'll let you guys think of an answer. I'll share you some that we got. Brandon said it's extra spicy. Just like Mary Brown's pop. Oh, you want to count it as a word? word? Yeah, sure. Why not? It's a contraction. Um, I, uh, do, do, do. Where else were we? Jimmy James just responded with the gif of um, Larry David going pretty, pretty good. Nice. Uh, we got a couple on Instagram as well. Heather Pether said exciting, intoxicating. And then a word I'm not allowed to say, but Zach Cassian wasn't afraid to say in his uh, press conference. And then Captain Felton didn't even need all three words. He just said reignited. Our friends at Jappa chiming in as well. They said invigorated, frustrating, exciting. And I tend mm. to agree with them, which is a nice transition mm. quickly into uh, our friends at Jappa, who, I mean, it's freezing. Bag Milk's car isn't working, but I bet you the equipment at Jappa would. Guaranteed. If Jap- if uh, Bag Milk was driving a C69 or C93 <laughs> down, down, the, down the white mud, well, that he- thing would not have broken down. And if it did, <laughs> if it did, because the elements are the elements, their service is so good. They would have been been there and had him back on the road. He with, would have been with, on this podcast. Well, he, he would have made the podcast. Yeah. Uh, uh, right now, he's stuck in a dealership right he, now. He might be in the market for a new vehicle for all we know. So, <laughs> uh, well, He's at the right place. <laughs> yeah. At their Instagram, Jappa underscore machinery. Their last post, quote, we're proud to have been a part of the pipeline built between Edmonton and Calgary to transport jet fuel. So Jappa bringing Edmonton and Calgary together in one way. Yeah, the hockey well. team splitting it apart. Nice. So that was my transition. Polarizing. There. Shout out to Jappa, our podcast sponsors. They are lovely. Check them out. JappaMachinery.com and on Instagram, Jappa underscore machinery. Boys, your three words to describe the Battle of Alberta right I, now. I got to keep it, Jappa. There's one thing I know about Jappa and um, its team. I know our, our, our friends Sean Green and Stephen Green and Marin Green and, um, and Russ Bray. Mm-hmm. All are loving what's happening right now with this rivalry. Nice. Because they get it. That's a business of Oilers fans. Exactly. And there you go. Now it's on. That's your three words, Nicholas Good. Now it's on. Now it's on. Jay, let's fucking go. I don't mind that at all, actually. That's a good one. I know. Jay's was just riling around in my head as soon as he said it, and I... It was, it, I took a, a change on it a little bit. Zach Lang, your your word to describe, three words to describe the Battle of Alberta. Good, hearty fun. <laughs> Good, hearty fun. I said it's just freaking awesome, and it is. January 29th is going to be an absolute blast. Um, one of the other areas I wanted to get to with you specifically, Jay, it's in regards to the Calgary trip, but a little bit different. Our Finnish friends are here. Oh, yeah. What an adventure. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, I know I you just took guys. a bite of your muffin, so I'll let you chew on oh, it for a second um, here. It's oh, processed. It's already, it's already gone. Um, just take chew. us through the journey that the Finns had to get to that hockey game. Oh, so he's, you know, I've got, I, I have to start this off with, um, you know, like the Scandinavian countries always get like voted like the most happiest places in the world. And I think it's cause they can take situations like what they just went through and just find the fun out of it. So our poor friends, um, had some logistical nightmares, uh, getting here so they weren't able to get onto their first flight out of helsinki so i get a call thursday night at uh, about 9 p.m and uh jay 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 we uh we can't get on our flight i'm like okay okay what can we do and so they told me what they needed to do to get on it it was just they just needed this piece of paper that took like 30 minutes to get um but because they wouldn't they wouldn't give them their tickets to get on the plane because they didn't have it so they all started applying for it right then and there and then sure as crap like five minutes after the flight takes off they all have like the necessary paperwork so normally that's not a giant issue um but there's a few factors at hand uh we can't there's no one in edmonton we can contact because of what time of night it's at and there's no service desk for the airline they're flying with in helsinki 
So I'm on the phone trying to call the airlines myself on their behalf, trying to get everything going. And everyone we talked to was just like, we can't help you. We can't help you. We can't help you. I was on the phone till four in the morning with the, with the airlines trying to get this sorted and none of them would help us. Uh, and I won't mention names. doesn't matter, but I will say our travel agent AMA really did help us out in the end. Once, once, once they were open for business, they, uh, fixed everything for us. But anyways, so long story short, these guys, we had to find a different way for them to get to Amsterdam because once they get to Amsterdam, they, we've got some options because they would have been stuck in the airport. And then these guys had to spend, some of them had to spend one night. Some of them had to spend two nights, and they had to come to, they would miss the bus to get down to Calgary. So then they, I, we got them all on flights to, or sorry, yeah, they, we got them all flights to Calgary then to meet us there. And there's some miracles and there's some bad news. So seven of them were going to miss the game because they're flying through LA and the flight didn't come in till like 10. So they would have missed the game, but they would have been able to join us for the after activities. Well, those guys go to the airport first thing, their flight to LA is canceled. Boom. They're moved on to some random flight with a, with a non-affiliated airline directly to Calgary. And now they're making the game miracle. Then there's the four guys, which, which part of it is Larvenin, the host. Uh, <laughs> when he got all his tickets changed, uh, after DeLarvin had to do all the work at the airport, he spent three hours getting all the tickets changed and convincing them to help him after they initially refused not to. Um, no one realized they booked his flight. It was supposed to be on a Saturday and it was for the Sunday. No. So the four of them missed uh, the game and came in Edmonton after. But 20 of them spent what should have been a 18 hour travel day and it worked out to about a 45 hour travel day spending lots of time in airports and hilarious connections and they all just they all came four different ways to come meet so they spread apart and came back together four different ways uh as a group so 20 of them were able to make the game so that was great because i provided a lot of atmosphere to the nation section and the fun news is the last group that was coming into Calgary, the seven guys, their luggage didn't make it. Oh my oh. God. <laughs> Have they gotten it yet? Or is it gone? No, no, they've got it all oh, now. So, <laughs> so then they can only find six of the seven bags and then they deliver the six bags and actually they only delivered five bags. Oh, and now the, one of the six bags is missed. Like this was like Murphy's law. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Um, you know, there was some, uh, unforeseen expenses that had to be taken on but this is also where our friends at ama are really stepping up they're going to to bat for us and they're going to get the all that taken care of with the airlines but like it was just the weirdest experience um i've ever been a part of and these poor guys they just want to come watch hockey and you know something that was supposed to be 18 hours was like three times as long and just like spending hours and hours and hours in airports but good news is they're all here now they're all, uh, I can assure you, they're all drinking right now. <laughs> um, we took them to the water park yesterday. The weather here is just fucking crazy to them. The funny thing about Helsinki is that uh, they checked the forecast. Tomorrow it's supposed to be 10 degrees, plus 10. And Jeez. then when they left, it's it's plus four. It only gets really cold up, up north. Like, they're further north than us, but, like, in northern uh, Finland, it gets really cold. But all the southern towns, because they're on the ocean, they get a milder climate. So they went from minus four to like minus 34, and they're just like, what the fuck? But they also are kind of enjoying it. They've kind of find some novelty to it. But we took them to the mall. Welcome to Canada. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got to get the real experience. So we took them to West Edmonton Mall yesterday so they can live in 31 degrees as advertised. <laughs> and uh, West Edmonton Mall was awesome. They brought a penguin to come greet them. So we had this hilarious little penguin named Sweet Pea. Uh, and then we, uh, took them to the, took them to <clears throat> the water park. They did zip lines. They did all the things and just kind of lived their best lives. I was following them. I had to go back to work. I was following them on social. And then I met them all at, uh, at bourbon street and, uh, they were getting their, uh, the party on and then, uh, got them back downtown and now it's game day and they're all excited. They're all, uh, in their jerseys right now. We're going to take them to the store to buy some more stuff here right away. And anyone who, I don't know if this podcast is going to come out before the game. It'll be up before the game. I don't know. We oh, okay. usually get most of our listeners on Wednesday, but maybe. Yeah, well, pay attention. Uh, you know, we're, we've got a, 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 the Finnish nation section. So we've got a nation section full of Finns. And we're also, well, it's a little bit Christmas party. So we've got a crew of 40 people in the nation section at, in, in Roger's place. And... Uh, pay attention because uh, I'm assuming they'll be chanting because that's just they like... They love it. They love it. They just love it. And, you know, if, if there's one thing, if I was the Oilers and they wanted to bring a vibe into the game, I would bring in like 200 fans. Mm. 
for one game yeah. and, and just and just give them like two sections or one section and just let them do their thing and it will just fill the entire building with energy. So I'm very excited to see how these guys are going to be tonight. Uh, I've got a reminder that just popped on my phone. I better print off the tickets because <laughs> don't want to fuck that up. Uh, <laughs> these guys have already been through enough. <laughs> Could you imagine? But uh, yeah, I know. So super pumped to have them. And, and you know what? It's so, like I said, like they're just, they, they, they've taken the shitty experience, the initial shitty experience, which is like, they just created fun around like, oh, whatever. They've got this saying called um, Wally Poise. Wally Poise. Yeah. And it just means like, ah, it's, it's all going to work out. And they and it's just like something that they live by. And uh, sure shit. Like they all came smiling. And I'm like, I'm like, ass. I'm like, so what do you think? Like, how's the trip going? They're like, I'm like, what do you, what do you, what do you want to see? He's like, oh man, it's just so awesome to be here. And like, it's so neat just to see like Canadians and how they act and like watching hockey with them. And you know, like the... How the how the atmosphere is different. Like they're just like pumped to watch hockey mm. and be in a different you know country. So that's super cool to see. And uh, we got some some things planned for them, and we're gonna we're gonna help them out with some uh, some things while they're here because they um, they had to spend a little extra money to get here. So we're gonna make sure we take care of them and uh, make sure they feel that they're the VIPs that they are. But uh, yeah, big game tonight. Pecorino is in town too, so they're excited for that. Well, and I, I'm, I'm not sure if Rene's starting, but even if he's not, Saros is. They love Saros too. He's a Finn too, right? But yeah. Rene, you were saying Rene is a god in that country. They love Rene, and they also love Koskinen. Yeah, anyone who plays on the national team. So mm. if 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 you're on a national team that had some success, so if it's a world like they like. The the Euros love the hockey world championships. Yeah. Love it. Like they live for it. So Finland winning last year is huge, right? Like so if 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 you're if you're a Finn that was on a winning team, you're a god. So like Kostin was clearly I have to go back and figure out which one it was, but like obviously Rene's been on it and stuff. Mm. So like gods, gods. Um, some other countrymen too in the game. Obviously, our Grandland is down, but the Nashville has a Grandland as well, Mikhail mm -hmm. Grandland. So yeah, plenty of uh, cool little storylines for the Finns. And this isn't the, the nation's only European group, right? There's Swedes coming soon. We got the Germans coming in the beginning of March. Oh, and the Germans! The Germans are coming, uh, and then the Swedes, led by one Tommy Salo. Mm, Holy wait. shit! <laughs> That was my uh, my my first Oilers jersey I ever had was a Tommy Salo jersey. Same. It was I really? had the old oh, yeah. uh, Seth Mc, or, uh, the McFarlane the, the yeah. McFarlane oil Todd Tom McFarlane. Salo jersey. Yeah, Todd that's McFarlane. Cool. Yeah, Todd McFarlane. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I would have accepted Seth McFarlane too. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the Family Guy. Yeah. So I got really excited hearing Tommy <laughs> Salo's name. Yeah, no, I'm I'm looking forward to that for sure. I'm excited that's for awesome. us. We're, the plan is that we're gonna have Tommy in studio. Hell yeah! Oh yeah. Okay, so that's gonna be a podcast you're all gonna want to. Uh, Stay tuned for yeah. it because that'd be fucking awesome. I was going to bring Larvenin in for um, today's show, um, but he's uh, the Finns are well on their way mm -hmm. today. <laughs> They're game day. They're excited. Mm -hmm. So okay. I might uh, I might pop them in briefly for one radio. Hey, why not? We hey, whatever oh, podcast yeah. it is, just, whatever, just for 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Talking yeah. about his experience. He'd like like he's tight with Oilers legends, man. He's tight with the Hall of Famers. Oh, right. Uh, Larvenin is such a big deal like when i went back in finland like i'm gonna sound like a broken record mm -hmm. and, and you know try to sell you a trip to finland that we're gonna do in september better fucking come uh he he's, he's a larger than life personality but like he is he is a celebrity back in finland it is hilarious yeah there it's uh, gonna be a hell of a game tonight that's a big stretch here for the oilers but they don't play a lot but their next four games are at home where they're actually not good mm -hmm. they're only 10 8 or they're average at home i should say really good yep. on the road average at home um, but you're playing the penalty three. kill though is not good at home. No, so which is weird. Bottom three in the league or something like that. But it's number one or something on, on the, the road. road yeah. yeah, I honestly think this. <laughs> so th this road trip was amazing, right? Like, like if, 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 if you look at the record, like and 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 seven who the, points and, is like and who they beat mm -hmm. is amazing. Mm -hmm. So they're trending the right direction. But I think this Calgary thing is going to give these guys the fire and the chip on their shoulder, being like, okay. We'll wait till the Battle of Alberta. We're going to beat you then, but we're also going to beat you in the standings. Like, I think this gave well, them some swag. Well, it comes at a big time for Edmonton, too, because between now and basically the 11th, we play Nashville, Arizona, All-Star break. Then we go Calgary, St. Louis, Calgary again. Arizona, <laughs> San Jose, Nashville. Like, those are all huge conference games. Nashville's all nipping at our heels. Are, yeah, like, they're all teams that are kind of in the and mix. And they have games at hand, San Jose, yeah. right? 
Yeah. So these these games are going to be really important. So this could be something good that uh, fires oh, the boys up for I'm this. I'm pumped. This is what we wanted, though, right? Exactly. Like, yeah. Fuck, man. It's a stretch drive. It is big, meaningful games. There's emotion. There's storylines around the team. Like Tim and Sid is leading the show on Sportsnet with Oilers and Flames talk. Like, yeah. it's awesome. And hopefully this race is good. Yeah. It'll lead up to an exciting trade deadline, which is good for the site and good for us as well. And guess who's back in town on Saturday? Taylor. Halsey, oh, that, Halsey. That's something that's been buried as well amongst <laughs> yeah. all this. Halsey's oh, coming shit. back with the Yotes. Oh yeah. Well, the what's the uh, Yotes record since he's been there? Four, five, and one. Or oh, five, interesting. Four and one or like yeah, yeah. Oh, so he's kind of slowing him down, a, isn't a three he? Three-game losing streak right now, Jay. Oh, interesting. <laughs> okay, okay, that's good. Um, although Jay, I think it would have something to do with the fact that both their starting goalies are hurt. <laughs> They've been running with Aiden Hill like every night, and tonight against San Jose. Um, and this actually might transition into our betting talk here that we were going to get into. But tonight against San Jose, yes, the shark or the Coyotes are at home. But man, they're favorites with Aiden Hill in net. Sharks have good uh, special teams too. Sharks have good special teams, and they're going with Aaron Dell between the pipes. Aaron Dell in Airdrie his boy. Aaron, yeah, is he an Airdrie guy? Airdrie oh, boy. Well, nice. We're not talking about nice things about Calgary and area right now. Um, <laughs> in his last five starts, Aaron Dell has given up just nine goals. So mm. if you're looking for an underdog to throw some coin on today. Um, is that because Martin Jones is hurt or they've realized he sucks? Yeah, they've realized he sucks. Oh, okay. Dell's okay. kind of taken over that okay. starting gig. But Zach, you were telling us never been much into sports betting. Never been big into it. I've always wanted to get into All it, right. but I can't I can't understand it for the life of me. So what's what's like a common question you have? Like when you look at the game tonight and you see like Arizona minus one thirty five. Yeah, that's like that doesn't make sense to me. All right. So basically the way that works, and maybe this is a good chance for some of our listeners to, you know, become educated on the topic a bit. Mm-hmm. Minus 135 means you're the favorite. If it's minus, that means you, if you bet a hundred and thirty a hundred dollars, mm-hmm. you would only get, you have to, I think you have to bet $135 to win a hundred. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the it, easiest way to explain it. So it's it. called a full unit. So you're betting a full unit's a hundred dollars, right? So that's usually what these unit. betting lines, yeah, what these uh, betting lines are based around. Yeah. Right. So if you ever see something that's a plus, like for the underdog, let's say, wh- what would the, uh, the sharks be? Plus one eighty, plus one fifteen, one fifteen. Okay, so then you're you're laying a hundred bucks, you're laying a unit, you're winning one hundred and fifteen dollars. So if you bet a hundred, you'd win one hundred and fifteen when it's plus one fifteen. Right. If it's minus one thirty five, you have to lay one thirty five to win a hundred. So, so you don't you, you don't have you don't have to bet a hundred. You don't. But no, that's no. the easy way. A unit could be one dollar. Right. Yeah. So then what's, what's, how do you tell, so the minus is the favorite then in the yes. matchup, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so what if it's like, so Tampa Bay, I'm looking at is minus 295. So they're so heavy, 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 heavy. So they're heavy playing tonight? Tonight? Don't even touch that uh, game. LA. Yeah, see, juice is not worth it there. Yeah. Right. Because you would have to bet $285 just to win that 100. Although, but then there's other bets you could do with that. Like if I'm on Bodog right now, but Tampa Bay minus a goal and a half is minus 115. So you'd have to bid $115 to win 100, but they have to win by more than a goal and a half. So win by two goals or more. Well, that makes sense. So that's kind of where a spread comes in. So how do, you, how do you find a good matchup? How do you find a matchup you like? Fucking just Ooh. go, you know what? Just bet with your heart, yeah. man. You, don't bet with your heart. No. Never bet with your heart. That's like the worst heart. advice you could give. That's why I'm on a bit of a hiatus because I was I was doubling down on the Oilers during their little so slide my there. my number one, one of my big rules, I don't bet on the Oilers. I try not to bet on the Oilers. It's just you, okay. too, too many things come into a factor when you're looking at it. But it's the Jay, best when you do it. Jay makes those mistakes all the time. He likes to hit uh, puck lines, money lines, spreads, overs, unders. No, I'm props. done. I'm done with overs. I'm <laughs> done with over, unders. I like props. I like, I, I like the thought of Betting on props. Ty guy's big fun. into props. Ty guy's a big prop better. Yeah, I do a lot of the props. Uh, like one of my favorite props on the Oilers, and it's something I don't bet it every game, but I keep an eye on it. The Leon Drysaddle shot prop. Like that dude shoots the puck a lot. Right now on well, Bodog. Now he does. Last, last he, year he did not. Yeah, but this year he shoots the puck a ton. So you can bet on if Leon Drysaddle will get over or under three shots on goal in the game. Mm. So like there's things like that. Like I know people are like fucking DJ and shit like mm-hmm. that. Um, <laughs> well, you do but, that a lot. Well, you're, you're, I d- do. you're a DJ <laughs> when you're, uh, when you're trying to win back some of your pot there and you're looking up at uh, Russian ping pong, uh, yeah, but or, you know, sorry, table tennis, uh, overseas and stuff like that. And you're, you're trying to, trying to win back a little bit of, uh, always your nest egg there. What's but it's oh, fun. It, it can be like a nice hobby of but, watching the game when but, you bet but, on like shots yeah, and but stuff. So, so, oh, yeah. Zach, so Zach's question was though, how do you find a good matchup? Yeah. Um, you know, a big thing you can look at, uh, pa- records really hockey. Hockey is, sucks. It's a bit of a sh- crapshoot, to be is honest. It it, it's a bit of a crapshoot. Um, the lines, unlo- like that Tampa Bay line is pretty big. You usually don't see lines that big. Usually they, they, they're around like a 115, 120 
Like they don't often yeah. go past 200 very often. But well, um, yeah, tonight no. the only teams that are in the 200s are the Islanders playing the Wings and mm. the Lightning playing the Kings. There you go. So like, I actually don't hate the Kings in that matchup. Kings Tampa, are a bad road Tampa, team. Tampa Bay is really hot, but the Kings are a sneaky. We tie and yeah. talk about this all the time. They're sneaky Sneak, good. They are sneaky good. Sneaky good with their analytics. Uh, we, I was I was showing we you had last this conversation week. last week. Yeah, they're sneaky good with their analytics. Their special teams are are surprisingly good. It's just their goaltending is <laughs> awful. So I don't know, but yeah, if you want to look at good matchups, um, recent records is a good uh, starting goalies is a starting big one. goalies, and then yeah, home, but look at home and road splits because like we talk about the Oilers really bad on the road when it comes to penalty kill for whatever reason really good at home with the penalty kill those kind of factors right yeah yeah it basically it, it's research if you want to be mm-hmm. smart with it or if you just want to have some fun and that's your like the one thing i always heard was you know some people like to go to movies some people like to go out for mm-hmm. extra meals some people get their entertainment from betting on sports man and if you just every week want to throw whatever it is 20 bucks and have it floating around on a few games throughout the week because mm-hmm. you find it to be fun that's kind of what i do like i don't it, bet a lot but i it does make it more interesting it for does. sure. It, don't be afraid also to say this is a stay away. Yeah. Jay tries to lure me in all the time with some of these bets and he tries to convince me. He's like, I'll even give you odds. I'll give you odds. And it's like, if you're feeling it, Zach, in your heart that it's a, it's a stay away. Stay, it's away. A stay away. Okay. <laughs> right, Jay? So that's the part of the heart you got to use. <laughs> and, and, and don't. Yeah. Um, I get, you know what? If you feel in your gut, fuck yeah. the heart. If you feel in your gut, it's a stay away. It's a stay away. Don't be emotional either because sometimes you'll bet the wrong outcome for the wrong game. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Betting the Sunday game when you meant to bet the Saturday uh, game. Oh, shit. And uh, never bet. Oh, fuck. Because what's your story on that? You that was bet. when you thought the Oilers were, they were down in a game and you thought yeah. they'd come no, back? No, yeah, no, no, yeah. no. Well, though, that was part of it, which I bet accurately, but it was, um, they were one goal away from hitting the over and I, I checked and I'm like, holy fuck, it's still playing, it's paying minus 110 to hit the over. I'm like, fucking, I put a hundred bucks down. I never bet a hundred bucks. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm like, this is the fucking easiest thing ever. Sure as shit. Uh, unfortunately, the opposing team scores to put it over. And I go and check my, uh, my account at the end of the game. Like, how am I going to get paid out? How am I going to get paid out? What? I got a pending. I got an open bet. And I went and I bet because the same teams play again the next day. It was Oilers Canucks. It was Oilers, Oilers Canucks. Canucks. So then I bet the over on the next game. And sure as shit, they, they were under. <laughs> And then, yeah. So and then, don't do that. And then, Zach, you know, when you when you start to get a little more confident with the single game bets, you can start getting into teases and parlays. I don't know that world. I know parlay. I don't know what teasing. I've means. heard the word parlay before. So parlay is just basically you're making combining outcomes. Combining outcomes. They yeah. all have to hit to win. Also, the old sports select cards. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah that's Got a giant parlay. Like, Although sports select is a. Um, no, money. Okay, it, well, I didn't it, know if we should go there, but yeah, it's a, it's a scam. They don't sponsor us. We're fine. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, like the interesting thing, like if you think the Lightning and Islanders, who are both the biggest favorites, are going to win, well, that's minus two eighty and minus two forty five. But if you were to put a hundred bucks on that parlay, well, it's almost even money. You'd be bringing in just over ninety one bucks. So oh, like, wow. you know, and actually, you know what? I just did that <laughs> live on the show. Are we yeah. feeling a uh, Lightning Islanders parlay tonight, boys? No. Um, what What's the line for the Oilers game tonight? The Oilers game, for those who are interested, they are plus 110 underdogs in this hockey game. The Oilers are underdog? The mm. Oilers are underdogs. I'm going to be. I like that. I'll throw that oh, out on Twitter. shit. Hammer Sweet. that. When the Oilers are underdogs <laughs> this season, they're 16, 15, and 2. So they, they're pretty good at being the dogs. Um, if you want to take them in regulation, it's plus 160. If you want to take them on uh, the puck line, reverse the puck line, it's plus 275. So, yeah. some, some, uh, Ooh, I would. Uh, Nick all of a sudden rethinking his theory I on think, never betting the Oilers. I think plus 275. Oh. That, that That is some delicious juice. I've been. Nashville's I've been, goalies have been good the past two have, games. Okay. Well, so, who's starting? I do know. Saros. Saros. Is it, has it been confirmed that it's Saros? Oh, we're just going to text. Our friends at Daily Faceoff have it unconfirmed, but Soros is coming off a shutout, so you'd assume it's Soros. Mm. Well, you 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 pray that it's Pekka. If it's Pekka as a net, then you take you take the Oilers by two all day because Pekka is well, both fake of their numbers aren't that day. great. Yeah, I mean, they've Rene is an eight nine five, and Soros is yeah. an eight nine and seven. And we need to solve Soros. Uh, you know, Soros actually, has owned us. A big reason why Laviolette was fired was because Nashville's goaltending was letting them down a bit. Renees are, are not bad when you look at five on five, but on special teams, they were really, really, really bad. So, well, that's the other thing. The only thing we have going against us, like we've got this galvanizing situation that happened on the weekend that I think the boys are going to come out hot fire, but we're playing a team that just fired their coach. You know what sucks? They're too, two though? and one since firing. I, I, I can't believe we're just bringing this up now with all this Matthew Kachuk bullshit. We totally buried fucking Connor's goal. 
Oh my God. Oh, yeah. Connor's goal. I almost fainted. I shot out of my seat so high <laughs> and due to the pitch or the angle of the seats, I almost <laughs> fell forward. I was jumping up and down and screaming because there was a row of uh, clock Flames fans right beside clock us. Clock at 44 kilometers per hour or something like that. That's actually so just insane to think about. Yeah. I hear Cam Talbot is still having nightmares <laughs> to this day. And like, how can you skate that fast and handle the puck so well? Like it's the disgusting. finesse. The yeah. always, something about like speed skaters reaching a top speed of mm. like 48 kilometers an hour when they're skating and they don't handle the puck. Yes. Like, um, that's insane. The Oilers posted a slow-mo like close-up video and basically from like between the red line and the blue line in, that puck was wobbling, wobbling, wobbling. Then it like the Corralled very it. last second, McDavid just kind of taps it and it goes flat and then he shelves it. Like the puck control on that goal was almost as impressive as the 44 kilometers an hour. Touch of the Messiah oh, there. It was so beautiful. Like like I said, like that was our game until we let that third goal in. Yeah, yeah. Like, absolutely. Fuck like Nuge. Yeah. And well, what about the Nuge, man? Yeah. Like two goals that like obviously second goal, we got, we got a little bit of luck on it, but who fucking cares? But that first goal was beautiful. Shout out to Rick too, Yamamoto with two points. And As you yep. tweeted, Zach, his Unreal. first two point game of his career. Unreal feeds on the goals too. Yep. Like he's got some real nice passes. It's amazing how he's just been able to just like some fit guys get it. Right well, you know what? Like he plays physical too. Yeah, like yeah. he's, he's, he's five eight, a buck thirty. It's gonna be interesting because now Archibald's up on that top line with McDavid. And they, him and Yamamoto, Archibald, I mean, both play a very similar yeah. game with that. Like they're they're smaller, they're slighter, but they they're a spark plug out there. So. I, oh, yeah. I I I've got a lot of time for. Archibald, like like Yamamoto can't hit like Archibald. Archibald no, can blow no. guys up. But but Yamo, Yamo gets into the corners. Oh yep. no, no, Yamo yeah. mucks it up. I'm just saying, like like I liked like the the. He's the Arch, like, Archibald can create space. Is it fair to say Yamo is a little bit almost like a Hemsky passing ability? Gets into the dirty corners to make the play. A little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I won't, I won't, I won't. Uh, oh God, I don't there's, hate that. There's what, no way Yamo goes back down been, though at this point. I, I never know. Like, he's I, an I NHLer for life. He, he's he fits an right NHLer in. But now, right? It's only because we called him up after Christmas, right, yes. Ty? Yeah. Exactly. Don't and listen next to up, Rick. It's going to be uh, Tyler Benson here. Maybe, maybe uh, after the bye week. You never yeah. know. You never know. Uh, quickly before we go, just another quick shout out to our good friends over at Japa. Check them out online, www.jappamachinery.com. Mm -hmm. uh, Zach, Nick, thanks for coming in and joining thanks, the pod. Any thanks time, boys. Oh, um, before we go, yeah, thanks for, you know, bailing us out. Uh, <laughs> Anytime. Because we, we have, have no bag, bag milk group. with a fake excuse. Chalmers <laughs> maybe with a legitimate excuse. I believe him. And maybe Wanye's sick. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, uh, we'll get, I asked for a doctor's note. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he has to read it on next week's episode. Yeah. Read the doctor's note out. Make sure it's legit. Recite it, yeah. Um, for everyone listening, please like and subscribe and write reviews. We didn't yes. do any review please. reviewing today, but that's because that's we, need, bag milk we need bag milk here mm -hmm. for it. So we, we broke that. We like to bribe our listeners here at Nation Radio to give us beautiful reviews or not. Five star us and pan us. I don't care. But one of you is going to get a noodle, noodle noodle gift card for your efforts. Nice. There you go. I if you leave a review, you could win Noodle Noodle. Zach, you're new to the city, but you're loving Noodle Noodle. Loving it. I've Perfect. gone far too many times. <laughs> oh. Green onion cakes for uh, life. God. Well, that's an Edmonton thing. Welcome oh, to you, yeah, buddy. Shit, boys. That is. Yep, absolutely. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining us, boys. Episode 154 of Nation Real Life is over.